my lovelies, today I'm here to tell you how not to get purple hair. Are you serious? I'm joking. Yes, my hair looks a little purple today because I decided, and any blondes out there will know this, I decided to put a purple shampoo in, left in a little bit too long. I'm kind of liking it. What do you think? It'll wash out, don't worry about it. Today we are here to talk and tell you and give you tips on how to stop wasting your money on designer bags that you do not need and how to shop intentionally. Just buy the good stuff. I've got all the tips here today, so stick around if that's something you're interested in. Stay till the end, because I have an interesting point also. Now, my shout out of today is to the lovely Flo Hawk. Hi Flo, how are you? Mwah! Big kiss to you, and the fragrance of today, because it's sunny here in Dublin, is none other than Dolce & Gabbana, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. And she is fresh, and she is powdery. Mmm, I love this. It reminds me of like Sicily and Italy. It's just breezy and watery and you'll find all the notes up on the screen. So let's get down to business. I have a bit of eye candy to share with you today. And number one, without further ado, how to stop wasting money on the bags and having too many bags. Just the ones you just don't need too many. So number one is take an inventory of everything you have in your collection. Now you might say, Viv, I've got three bags. Right, but you stick around. I have a point for you as well. Take an inventory of everything you have in your collection, how many bags you have, what style bags, are they top handles, are they cross bodies, are they shoulder bags, are they clutch bags, whatever they may be. Take an inventory so you know exactly what you have in your collection so that when you uh, go to, when you're shopping, or you're online or wherever you may be, you are not caught off guard and you know exactly what you're looking for and you know exactly what you need in your collection. Which brings us to point number two nicely, which is what purpose will this bag fill for you? Is this bag going to provide some sort of purpose in that, is it a work bag? Is it a going out bag? Is it an evening bag? Is it a just an everyday running around bag? Is it a hiking bag? Is it a travel bag? It, you know, it depends on what the purpose of this bag is. If you already have one, take a look at that bag in your collection. If it's good enough, just say, no, I'm not allowed. Move on, cross it off, unless it's a case of, I just want it. That's a completely different story. Number three is what gap will it fill in your collection? Is this bag going to take the place of maybe an old older bag that you know has been used and abused and you just need to update it you need a new piece in your collection maybe it's something like that or is it a case of yeah I don't have a crossbody in my collection actually or I don't have a top handle in my collection or I don't have an evening bag or I don't have a bag to go shopping and running errands every day just what gap will it fill and know that each bag in your collection has a job to do now says she and I will show you and you might say if you're a hypocrite because you have bags in your collection that you haven't used. And you know what? You're right, and I'm going to show you which bags they are. And you may shock you because I'll tell you at the end. So there are some bags I have not used, right? Let's just show you one, for example. My beautiful small Chanel classic flap. Now, during the week, I was having massive thoughts. And actually, please help me out on this one. I really was having thoughts during the week of letting this one go because simply because I haven't used it. Like, I absolutely love this bag because of the gold-plated hardware. I've told you about that before. It was one of the reasons I bought this bag. Actually, red is very, very much in, in the Chanel new colors this, this year, which is also another reason I'm thinking of holding on to it. But I haven't used her to date. She's a little beauty, and she is, I have her stuffed inside. She's a 1996 bag, as far as I know. But the point being that I haven't used her. She's a size small, and I even put her on today with this little outfit, I have all black on. And I thought, oh, she's quite nice with this. And then I was like, mm, is she a bit small for my frame? And then I held her on in the crook of my arm, it was quite nice. So let me know down below, should I sell her? Should I let her go? Should I just take my own advice? I haven't used her, and I'm telling you guys now, your bag needs to have a purpose, provide some sort of value to you and uh, just really you should be using them and that's what I want to do with my bags and unfortunately and I love love the yellow gold hardware on this bag with the red I just think it's gorgeous so let me know down below what you think because I have been thinking but no I haven't used this bag so I am guilty and that's why I have the experience to let you guys know not to make the same mistakes as I've made the next one is the colors that you will actually wear 
Now, a lot of the times with this one, we have this fantasy self going on. You're like, oh, I'm going to go here and it's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to be in the south of France and I'm going to wear this and I'm going to have this lovely summery outfit on. And summer does funny things to us women as well, you know? I think it just does funny things to people in general. <laughs> <laughs> so you're there and you're like thinking of your outfit and you're dreaming it up and you're dreaming the country you're going to be in and how and you know the 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 scenario that you're going to be in and you're for dinner and you're going to wear this and nine times out of ten you end up basically going to the pool that day chilling out maybe just staying in your casuals or your comfies in the evening you don't even go out for dinner so you're there going I don't even need a bag for dinner but be careful of the colors as I said because it may not be a color that actually suits your skin tone it may not be a color that you actually wear a lot you might just go oh that's you know the color of the season case in point my beautiful green Bottega Veneta Jodie now I will be wearing this bag and I will be wearing her with whites in the summer but I just wanted to make an example of this bag I absolutely love this color but it is a color I don't have a lot of and I definitely will wear it during the summer but I have a few bags I really want to bring on holidays I'm going in a couple of weeks cannot wait with me and this is one of them and I just think you've got to be careful with the colors that you choose. I think this is lovely with black. It's just a pop. If you don't have other colors in your in your collection, you know, if you're wearing all white and this is just the statement, it's beautiful. My Trendy CC actually is even a better example in that my Chanel Trendy CC, if you remember it, it was such a stunning bag. I absolutely loved it, but it was it was quite for me, the, the yellow undertones weren't my favorite. I'm more of a caramel brown, warm, that kind of color tones I adore. Whereas the yellow just, I, I don't know what it was, my skin tone, whatever it was, I just couldn't and I wasn't I wasn't reaching for it so I let it go and I hope my subscriber is absolutely loving it I really do because it's a stunner of a bag but that is an example the color didn't work for me and you have to know yourself and what works in your wardrobe the next point number five make a wish list and sleep on it now I can be quite spontaneous so again I have to eat my own words here I can be quite spontaneous I have you know, being known to kind of go out and go, yes, and I actually kind of really like that side of my personality, but it can be very, very dangerous. And especially when it comes to bags that are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand, whatever it may be, very, very dangerous. So especially as well in the climate that we're in, I think we all have to be aware how much value is in our bags, if there's any value in our bags, how it's going to change, how the uh, pre-love market, the prices may change. And might I notice a lot that they're reducing and getting lower and lower. So obviously sellers are not getting what they're asking for the prices because people don't simply have the money. So just be very careful, make a wish list, sleep on it and no impulse buying particularly in the economic climate that we're in at the moment it's just very all over the place we don't know where we're we're going to be at and you know just be careful that's all i would say there and check in with yourself number six this one i like because it's like check in with yourself and ask yourself why you're buying this piece buying this bag are you buying it because of the brand whether it be hermes whether it be chanel whether it be fendi whether it be bottega veneta are you buying it for the intrinsic value that it shows everybody else that basically well there's an intrinsic value for yourself but then on the outside you know that you're accomplished that you've achieved something look what i've achieved look where i am at in life a lot of the brands are are quite showy and a lot of people buy them for those reasons so you just have to ask yourself why am I buying this bag actually Jessie Style had a great video last night I link it down below for you and uh, it was basically about the Birkin bag and she was watching some channel Bebo luxury I think it was this guy basically he was like Tanner Leatherstein took the Birkin bag apart you could see inside the Birkin bag and you're like is that what I'm paying all this money for it was actually eye-opening it was astounding so we're just paying for the brand so check in with yourself ask yourself why do I need this bag why do I want this bag and why am I buying this bag in the first place is it going to be worth it to me and down the road resale value these are important questions people might say well that's not you know you should just buy it because you like it yeah but you've got to be smart as well as I said it particularly in this climate and particularly if you don't want to end up reselling which is just a nightmare any of your bags now I've had thank God lovely experiences reselling them, but like I've heard of different girls who've sold bags the bags got lost in the post all of this kind of stuff 
and yeah, things can happen, you know. Now, number seven trends. I've talked about this before. Just be careful. You might buy a bag and you, you'll get swept up with Instagram, swept up with YouTube and all the unboxings and everybody else who's buying this trend piece and you go, oh my God, I just want it. Like if you remember years ago, the Chloe Nile, Antigona by Givenchy. Uh, there were so many, um, Jack Moose, all of those bags. Trend, trend, trend. Although the Givenchy in fairness, and I do love that bag, is more of a classic now. But the trend bags, they come in, they come out. Who's wearing Jack Moose anymore? Maybe people still are, but particularly the one, the big loop handle. You just be careful and what you know are you going to look at it in a few months time and go oh i hate that bag or it just reminds me of that time or i can't wear that anymore because it's so out of style you want to get your value out of the bag you want it to last and you don't want it to be a case of three months done and where's your money gone and the bag has completely dropped and devalued by probably half price so just just be careful there for trend bags sometimes i prefer to go on the pre-love market you'll find a lot on vestiaire fashion file rebag all of those sites where some people haven't even as i've talked about before even worn these bags so trends bags i would definitely look on the pre-love market for and you'll get a new bag there number seven is duplicates duplicates and multiples be very careful i was going to bring out my little square mini my black one today because i have two little square mini chanel square mini uh, handbags i have the uh, caramel 21p and i have the black and i was thinking again the two bags i was thinking of during the week were my small red chanel and my mini black chanel because when i was doing this video i was like thinking about it and I was like okay Viv you have a couple of duplicates here that you really need to downsize and you have bought a couple of pieces a lot this year you know I like it to be curated I don't want to have too many pieces I don't want to be worrying ensuring safety management space storage all of that kind of stuff do not want to have to worry about it so let me know if anybody's interested in the black mini Chanel but I like that it's duplicates it's multiples what do we need them for they're beautiful now and I did again take down that bag look at it with this outfit and I was like oh my god yeah it's fabulous and it's such a classic but you've multiples of these bags there's only seven days in the week there's only so many places you go and things you do and I'm walking in and out of that closet every day and I'm looking at them sitting there and they're looking back at me going how are you Viv are you gonna take me out today are you gonna take me out today Viv no okay then it's fine it's fine everything's fine it's okay <laughs> That's the honest to God truth of it. So be careful of your duplicates and your multiples. Number eight, as I was saying earlier, is find your style. There is no point. We can all look at pieces and I would advise you to do this. I had the beautiful Gucci horse bit. Oh, such a stunner of a bag. Box bag. I loved it. I let it go because it was sitting in my closet and I just hate that. I think of it often actually and I go oh god whoever has that bag and actually one of my subbies who did buy it sent me a picture she was going to a wedding and she was wearing it and I was like oh my god that is what that bag is supposed to do. It's supposed to be worn and it's such a stunner of a bag but it's okay to admire it on somebody else sometimes. You don't have to own everything. You can look at things and go that is stunning but I would never wear it. I have nowhere to wear it to. It's not my style. I'm very casual and if you're in you know in cosmopolitan like i'm in dublin but i'm out in the suburbs so i'm not in the city center all the time i'm not going out all the time like i was 10 20 years ago so i'm just not going to get the wear of it because i have so many bags so something's got to go so have a think about that one and, and and also find your style whether you're a top handle girl a crossbody girl you know a clutch bag Whatever it may be that way, you just need to know what you like so that you're not making the same mistakes that we have made for the last however many years that we've been on luxury YouTube, last four or five, six years for people. I'm going on three and you learn an awful lot as you go. Number nine, is it a want or is it a need? Well, this guy kind of touched on this earlier. You might be in a financial position that it doesn't matter. You can just buy what you want. It doesn't matter whether you need it or not. And that's perfectly okay. But somebody else who's on a budget really needs to think about, well, do I need this bag? Again, what gap will it fill? What purpose will it fill? Or do I just want it? If I just want it and I can't afford it, just leave it until the next time. So you're not, you know, putting yourself in debt, putting a noose around your neck and really, really, you know, making life hard for yourself. Just think if it's a want or a need. And if it's a want, just leave it there until the next time. As I said, unless you've oodles of cash, it doesn't matter to you. You don't care how much money you have. You don't care how much you spend. That's a completely different story. Number 10, your body type. There are so many bags that just don't suit some people. Now, I have, I wanted to show you this for this example, 
This one, as we all know, my little beauty, my Fendi, my little ice blue, baby blue, or blue broom, as I'm going to call her in the Fendi, and I just think she's gorgeous, and I actually now love this Palladium hardware that I was debating about, if you remember, I wanted the gold, because I'm such a gold hardware kind of person, but since I got my Birkin with the Palladium hardware, I'm, I'm more open to, and I actually like having the difference, it's like, it's really nice, because gold, gold and Palladium come in and out anyway, but, Find your style, your body type. Obviously, I'm not stick thin, so you're like, well, Viv, what are you doing with a tiny bag like this? But this, to me, on holidays, with the crossbody, which actually I don't have inside today, is just gonna be so cute, I don't care, you know, under the boobage kind of moment. It's going to be fabulous, and I can clip it on one of my other bags if I feel like it, and I just don't care, because I like travel light on holidays. I really do, it's hot, it's sweaty, it's humid and this would be perfect for me for my card, a lip gloss, I'll have my phone in my hand, off I go. But if you're the kind of person that for you, and you, you know, and again, it's like with the Chanel Mini, the Chanel Small, all of the rest of it, if you prefer, if you're a curvier girl, you prefer a bigger bag, you have to think about those things. If you look in the mirror and you go, this looks ridiculous, you have to think about that because you will not wear the bag. You will just, you probably feel embarrassed. You'll feel, you know, oh no, you won't feel comfortable. And you have to feel comfortable in what you wear, how you look and the bags that you choose. So think about your style and the, the pieces that just may not work out for your lifestyle also is another point as well. So your lifestyle is so important. You could be in whatever climate you're in and like, this is this this is why I brought this baby out. Your lifestyle. Right, I live in a climate, we live in Ireland where it is pretty rainy. Please ignore the fact that I am completely missing one nail. I've been very busy changing my studio around. I'll give you a look at that actually. And doing garden work and stuff, so I have to get my nails done. Anyway, <laughs> that that and purple hair, we're doing great today. So uh, yes, this beauty I just had to have, as we know, it's wicker. Does wicker go in Ireland? Not particularly, because Ireland rains, we know that, although it's beautiful at the moment. But wicker and Ireland are not friends. But I'm going to Spain for the summer, well, hopefully for three, four weeks of the summer, at this beauty will most definitely be coming with me. But therefore, I knew that I would get the value out of this at least in the summer when I was buying this bag. I knew it was totally impractical and not functional for Ireland, but because I do travel and in the future tend to travel even more, I just had to have this piece. I just had to have her and I still adore her and I haven't worn her and I just can't wait to bring her with me and I will bring you with me as well on holidays. I'll do a, maybe I'll do a pack with me and all that kind of stuff for you. So she's definitely coming, but do definitely think about your climate, a rainy climate, you know, all of that kind of stuff because you need a bag that is suitable for your lifestyle. Otherwise it's gonna sit in your shelf again, looking pretty at you going. Any chance of a date? No, any chance of a day out? No, no, okay. Okay, so number 11, longevity visualization. Longevity visualization. I thought this was a good one in that when you're buying a piece, think to yourself, think into the future. Think future Viv, future Flo, future girls out there. You know, just think of your future self. Think first of all, how's this bag going to look in 10 years time, five years time, two years time? It's going to wear well. Do your research on it. Watch all the videos on YouTube. That's what I did and it really, really helps. Will I wear it for many years to come? Like again, that goes to kind of the classic piece. Will it become outdated being the trendy piece? Just have that long-term view of how it will fit with your lifestyle. How, even when you get older, will, will would it be too heavy? You know, all those practical things will really help in making a very solid decision and a very solid, you know, financial decision if you're really dropping that much cash. Ask yourself all of these questions. Next one is fabric. There are certain fabrics I will not buy because of whether it be delicate like suede. I adore suede, absolutely adore it. And YSL do beautiful suede. And I will not buy suede, maybe in a smaller bag I would. Even though I buy lambskin, you might say, yeah? But suede, I just find if you get one little mark on suede, or I have done in the past, maybe now that I'm older I could actually even mind it. Cause I was quite, um, you know, I'd be out in the clubs and stuff when I'd be younger and I'd be quite kind of careless sometimes, you know. But as I get older, I'm not like that. And I really do mind my bags. So suede was always a no-no for me. And it's important to ask yourself about the, the fabrics because when you walk into a shop, you get caught and you'll go, oh my God, Look at that, it's amazing. And the fabric and the sequins is another one. A sequins, like the Fendi we get with the sequins. Stunning, I've had bags with sequins, sequins fell off. Not doing it anymore. A lot of people have had good experiences with patent and then other people just go, absolutely no, 
I don't think I've ever had a patent bag. I don't think I have, but it just wouldn't be, it's not a bag that takes my kind of fancy anyway. So just look at the durability of the bag and the fabric and the quality. Go for quality because you will get longevity and durability, of course. Again, that comes back to your climate. It comes back to, and I know again, durability, lambskin and durability are two words that should not be in the same sentence, but if you mind your bags, then that is a different story. So caviar might be better for you. It just, you know, depends on what you like. Oh yeah, if you're too scared with the durability, if you're too scared to use it, again, it's just gonna sit on your shelf and you're going to admire it. You're gonna throw sugar on it, at it, unless it's Hermes or Chanel or Louis Vuitton, it's probably gonna decrease in value. So just be very, very careful and color transfers and things like that. Think about all these little points, the unwanted attention as well. Some people will not buy a bag because it's just too loud. Think about all those things. Next point is your style again, which I touched on earlier. Do you prefer a top handle? Do you prefer a crossbody? Do you prefer, and even sometimes it's not what you prefer, but it's what you wear. Like I love top handles, but I also find now that it can't be just a top handle, it has to have a crossbody option because I generally like to have my hands free and I like to be, well, I'm generally busy and I like to be able to get my phone or get this, that's what be hands free. So crossbody top handle is perfect for me. This little beauty I love because yeah, it has no crossbody, but you can just stick your hand in and it goes on the crook of your arm like that and it's grand if you want to just for a second, you know, answer your phone or do whatever you want to do. Number 14, versatility. Versatility is a massive one. Again, if you want to use your bag during the day, in the evening, like Louis Vuitton are brilliant for that, the Palm Springs Mini which I have, the Pochette Matisse is quite versatile, you know, not it's not an evening bag but it's definitely a run around bag, you could definitely go for lunch with that bag, um, the Palm Springs Mini you can use it in the rain, so think about the versatility of your bag, your date night bags, your, and you only need one to two date night bags, you really do, I think anyway, again that's another bag I was thinking about the other day even though I absolutely adore it, it's my Mini Lady Dior, I've never worn it, and I was thinking to myself well I let it go and I, I can't bring myself to but those are the three bags I'd love your opinion on down below my Chanel mini the black square the red Chanel uh, small and my lady Dior mini and I'd love to know what you think should I sell them should I keep them I just don't know hell so last point last but not least if it's not a hell yeah it's a no okay if you walk into a shop and you go yeah, I don't know, mm, I'm not sure, no, I don't, no, no, just don't buy it. Do not buy it because nine times out of 10, you will not really love that bag. I, I just find if you don't get the initial burst of, oh my God, yes, then yeah, usually it's a no. And then the reselling of it is not fun. Again, as any girls on here will tell you, it's just not fun. As I said, you can have lovely uh, customers or clients that want to buy the bag off you, but the whole process of doing it is difficult. Again, then the poor resale value, think about that. So if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. That's it, they're my 15 tips for today. I hope you enjoyed them and let me know what you think if I should sell some of my said bags down below. And until next time, I have lots coming up for you. And um, Be kind, be safe, be compassionate. Love you lots. Mwah.